Hi, it's Ginger from In Sheep's Clothing Yarn Shop and I'm here today um, focus on fiber and we are going to be talking about the abyssal shawl. This has been a really really popular shawl that's been on the internet. Um, this woman, um, I'm actually, her name, uh, she's French and I can't remember what her name is but we can find it on my uh, uh, website. Um, this shawl um, it's a lace pattern. It's a shape that has been very, very popular. And what it is, is that it has a wide part here, and then it's kind of long and narrow, so that if you want to, you can tie it, or just wrap it around, kind of wear it like a shawl, or even just like a little neck piece. Um, and it has shaping. So you have one long strip of lace, and then you have a shaping that goes here. You can see that it's wider and it gets narrower at the end. And this is called short rowing. So we're going to be talking about the lace today and I'll be showing you how to do the short rowing, which is actually very simple. Um, the particular, these two pieces right here, as you can see all the little glitter and shining that's going on, that's all happens in the yarn. The yarn has sequins in it or little paillettes, however you want to, to say it. And you can see, especially in the light, that it, it shines. Um, some of the yarn is also multicolored, so you get this really, really pretty effect uh, from that as well. Um, like this one here, it's not really a solid color. It has a little bit of, little bit of multis going on there too. So it gives you some added dimension. But look at the, the shine, especially under the lights. It's just, it's just so, so pretty. A little bit of shine without making it look totally over the top glamorous. Now another thing that you can do with this shawl too that looks equally, pre equally pretty is doing a multicolored yarn. Now this happens to be a silk and wool blend so it feels very very soft and yummy. And you have the effect of all the multicolors which will create a striping pattern. And that yarn right here is this. You can see the different colorways that you get with this yarn and it just it just feels so nice. Now another thing that you could do with this particular shawl if you wanted to and you didn't just want all the color striping you could do it in a solid or what I would think that would be really really nice and I just haven't had the opportunity to try it out myself is to do something like this where you do the lace in the multicolor and then you take a complementary color like this and then do your solid here for the body part of the shawl which I think would really really be very attractive. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show, that you, show you the lace how to do that which is very very simple. So we have our stitches on for our lace. And just put our cast on on. Now with this particular pattern they do have you do a couple of rows of garter stitch which is, ju which is just to knit and knit. So we'll knit the first row for our garter stitch. It also gives you a nice little base so that it doesn't roll up on you. So just going to knit across. And I'll skip the second row garter stitch just because I don't want you getting bored watching me just do garter stitch. So now on the pattern, very, very simple. All you do is you slip the first stitch. It just gives you a nice little edge by slipping. So as if to knit, I'm going to slip the stitch just right off onto my right hand needle. And then I'm going to knit two stitches together three times. So I take my first set of stitches and sometimes if you can't get into it, if you just kind of pull your stitches down a little bit and get that needle into those two stitches, 
I'm going to knit those two together and then I'm going to knit the second pair together and then the third together. So there's our knit three. Knit two together three times and then we need to yarn over knit one six times. So yarn over our needle and then knit one. Yarn over our needle, knit one. If it helps you, yarn over, just kind of, I just kind of put my finger on top there, this way the yarn's not going anywhere, and then knit my next stitch. Yarn over, whoops, <laughs> yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, and I believe I've lost track of how many I did. But that's pretty easy to figure it out. We'll just go back. There's my slip stitch. There's knit two together once, twice, three times. So there's my yarn over, knit one. So there's our first set. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my six. Now the next part of the pattern is SSK three times. SSK means slip, slip, knit. Very, very simple. All you do is you take your needle and you go in as if to knit and you slip it off the, the left hand needle. Slip the next one off the needle. Then you take your left hand needle, you put it through the front of the stitches and then knit them together. What this does is it, it gives your stitch an angle to the left. So we're going to slip, slip, and then knit two together, and then slip, slip, and knit two together. And somehow or another, I managed to not put on enough stitches because I wanted to end with a knit one. So I'm gonna do a little, you can't knit without knowing how to fudge. And this is one of those circumstances where I'm just going to create another stitch. I'm just going to make it. It's our first row. It's our little sample. Nobody's going to know the difference at this point. So now I, I ended with my knit one. So now I'm going to turn the work around. And our next row is just to slip the first stitch as usual and then purl across ending with a knit one. So I'm going to slip the first stitch and then I'm going to purl the following stitches. Oops. And you can see those big yarn overs are going to become these big eyelets. So I just keep purling across. Now this is another one of those patterns that you can see is like a ripple, kind of like the zigzag that I had done on the previous show. So we'll get dips and valleys in our knitting. So now that is the second row accomplished. And you can start to see how there's, there's the peaks and valley there. And you can see there's our eyelets. So now this next row, open this up. The next row is we're going to slip one again, and we're just going to knit across the row. So we'll just knit across. Oops. And you can see those yarn overs in this section those beautiful eyelets. And just knit. There we 
we go. Now you can see how on this shawl right here, whoops, that's the section that we're making right there, right there. So that's just one repeat. And excuse me as I get my needle. Okay. This is where circular needles are great. You don't lose that extra needle like I keep doing with this. So now the next row, let's say we did the knit. We're going to slip one. And we're going to knit this row. This is what's going to create our little garter stitch ridge on the other side, on the right side. So we just knit across. go and now when we turn it around see there see our nice little ridge there so that what that does is it defines our lace pattern see how you have those nice ridges in between it also makes it easy to count how many sections you have here so I have one two three four of them right there So that creates our lace section. Now, if I were to do, well, what I do, I've made so many of these, these, um, these shawls because they're very, very simple. And because they all come out looking so different with all the different yarns that you can use, it's kind of like eating potato chips. I can't stop making them. Um, so what I do when I'm making these, because you put on 250 some odd stitches, that's a lot of stitches, and I'll put them on a circular needle, uh, it calls for a size 8 needle, and I usually use like a 32-inch uh, circular. And what I'll do is, because you have a slip stitch at the beginning of your row and at the end of your row, it's really easy to remember. You have 19 stitches in the first section. You place your marker, and then I place a marker every 18 stitches all the way across. So it's just very, very simple to keep track of the sections of your lace. And then you end with 19 at the end. So if you have run into any problems, you know exactly where the problem is in that section. Now, so you'll repeat this until you can actually make this as deep as you want. So say that you want to have a deeper, deeper lace pattern. You can do, the pattern basically calls for, uh, I think it's five to six ridges. You, you can do as many as you want. You can also, the pattern um, has two different uh, gauges. You can do like a medium weight yarn, like a worsted weight, heavy worsted weight yarn, or you can do a much lighter weight, like a, a lace weight. It just costs for more stitches. Uh, come about the same size. It'll just, as I said, require more stitches um, as you knit. Um, so then once you've done your lace pattern, then you're ready to do your short rowing. And that's where we're going to start right here is the short rowing. So what you do on the pattern is the have you go literally knit across half of your shawl. So you've got your lace that you can see it's pretty long. You have your lace like that. And what you'll do is you knit halfway across to get to the center point of your lace. And then if you can see right here, see how wide it is here? What happens with short rowing is you're trying to build up a wider section so that this is going to be a narrower section here. So what happens is you come here and you knit and you keep going and you keep adding, increasing more and more stitches into your knitting. And you'll keep having more and more stitches. And you keep doing that all the way across until you finally incorporate all the stitches of your lace pattern. And then you'll be done and then you'll be doing your, your border on this. So I'm going to show you how to do the short rowing. 
So now what I did is I just put on about 30 stitches and we are going to knit a little more than halfway on this because I want us to have enough stitches to show you how to do the short rowing. So I'm going to just knit across this. And I think my stitches are a little twisted. And actually this is, a, my stitches are twisted on this needle because I had, had to take them off and I slid them back on the needle and I slid them on wrong. So what I'm going to do is a lot of people when they go, when they realize, well first of all you need to realize that if your stitches are twisted you need to fix them because otherwise when you go to knit them on the right side of your work you're going to see that your stitches are indeed twisted. So when I go to put my needle into the front here I can tell it's it's not quite right. So what I need to would normally need to do is take that stitch and just turn it around and put it back on the needle. Then I can knit right through the front of the stitch and it's good. Say the same thing, this one is twisted. So I would take it, turn it around, put it on the needle, and then I can f knit. Well, that's fine, you can do that. But another really simple way of fixing this and not having to do two steps is simply knit through the back of your stitch. So all I do, instead of turning it around, is I just take my needle, go right through the back of the stitch, and just knit it. It will turn itself around. It's already fixed itself, so it's already straight on the right side of the row. So I just knit through the back of the stitch. Back of the stitch, back of the stitch. I mean, if it really kind of bothers you and you don't want to knit that way, you can take the stitch, turn it around, and then work through the front of the stitch. But you're essentially doing exactly the same thing, just creating another step for yourself. And I'm all for let's make things simple, easy, and faster. So I'm just going to go across here, hoping not to split some of my stitches. Now sometimes you do want to knit through the back of the stitch for one reason or another. But today we're just going to we just want to untwist them. Okay, so I'm about three quarters of the way across now. So now when we go to do our short rowing, what we want to do on the pattern, they're telling you to knit across 130 stitches. And then what you do is you turn your work around. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'll follow the pattern, is now I'm just going to purl eight stitches. So I will purl eight stitches across. It's two, three, four. And eight. And now what they could say is you're going to wrap and turn. What does that mean? Okay, what you're going to do is you have your yarn in the front. What I'm going to do is slip the next stitch from the left hand needle to the right as if to knit. Then I take my yarn and I put it to the back and then I just put my stitch right back onto the needle. Now you turn, so that's the wrap. So now I turn my work. See how my yarn is in the front here and it's behind the stitch? I just take my yarn, put it behind the needle. It's wrapping around that front stitch. So now what I want to do is I want to knit seven stitches. So I go one, two, three, four, and seven. Now, you can see right here, this is what the wrap and turn is all about. See how we have this great big hole? We don't want that in our shawl. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit these next two stitches together. That will close the gap. So we I just have to get through both of them. We knit those two stitches together. And now I'm going to knit three more stitches after this. One, two, and three. And I'm going to do another wrap and turn, which means I'm going to put my yarn in the front, 
I'm going to slip that stitch again, put the yarn back, and then slip my stitch back to the left hand needle. And then I turn my work. And there's my yarn behind the stitch right there. It's behind the stitch. And now I'm just going to put that yarn back. Well, actually, in this case, I don't want it back because I'm going to be purling across. So now I'm going to purl 10 across the row. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's 10. I'm going to purl the next two stitches together. And then I'm going to purl three stitches past that. One, two, three. I'm going to do my wrap and turn. Slip that stitch. Put the yarn behind it. Slip that stitch back on. Turn around. Oops. See where my yarn is behind the stitch? I'm going to put that back. And you can see right now, see how it's starting to build up? Right here in the center, starting to give me this curve. It's leaving this narrower at the end of my work and this fuller here for the shaping. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue in this manner very, very simply by, you almost don't even have to look at the pattern at this point because what you're just going to do is you'll knit across. You can put markers if you want just to keep track but you can kind of see what's going on. So I knit across, knit across, and then we get to, oh, we keep going here. And right here is where our gap is. So we want to close that gap up so let's knit two stitches together to close up the gap. Now I'm running out of stitches because this isn't the shawl. So we'll just for, for the sake here is just knit the next stitch, turn our work. We would purl across, which I'll do and see that gap. You can just, you can just see it. There's the gap right there that we're going to want to purl two together. So we just purl across. This is actually quite fun. And this is similar, I mean, this is short rowing. And this is what they're talking about when you're doing a sock and you need to short row to make your heel because you need to create that space, that extra shaping uh, that you need for your heel. It's good too if you want to make shaping um, for a sweater and you need extra ease, like for the bust. Okay, so there's our big gap again. We're going to purl those two together. Purl three across. Slip our stitch. Put our yarn behind. Slip our stitch back again. And when we turn, there's our wrap put our yarn back so that we can start to knit again. And you just keep doing that, keep adding three stitches, closing the gap and adding three stitches. And you keep doing that all the way across until you get to the very ends of your shawl. And you can see how it works right to the very end of the shawl. Now the one little thing I changed about the pattern uh, with all the, scar the shawls that I made was at the end, they just bound off. And I found that that made the shawl roll a little bit. So I just felt it was a little bit better if you do a little garter stitch edging on it. And it kind of is in keeping with the garter stitch ridging that you have on the shawl and the two rows of garter stitch that you have at the very beginning of the shawl. So I just think it's a just nice finish. So if you go on the website, you can find the link to this pattern called Abyssal and you can create one of your own, your own shawls. It actually takes very little yarn. Three skeins will make this shawl um, in any of this yarn or this kind of yarn. It doesn't take a lot of yardage. And it's a really pretty quick project.
So thank you very much for spending your time with me here at Focus on Fiber, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.